Hello and welcome to uh, part, uh, let's see, where are we on? 13 of my tutorial series on how to program the Kurzweil PC3. Uh, today I want to talk about wave sequencing. Uh, first of all, uh, what is wave sequencing? Wave sequencing is basically playing back um, different waveforms in some sort of a sequence so that like, for instance, when I hold down a key, uh, you don't just hear a piano sound, but you hear a bunch of different kinds of sounds. Um, let me just kind of show you right now what that sounds like before we jump into this. Uh, here's a program that I put together last night. This uses two layers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down the sustain pedal here. I'm going to hit two notes. Uh, let's adjust some sliders here real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Okay, you're going to hear these notes change a little bit over time. Now I'm going to hit another note after moving the mod wheel. Now I don't know if you noticed yet, but um, the uh, you're never really hearing the exact same sound. You're hearing some sounds that are the same, but there's definitely part of that that's very different. Um, and I can add on another key here. Let's go ahead and hit this one. So I have this constantly evolving soundscape that I've created with just two layers. And uh, this will literally go for hours without repeating, okay? And I didn't use, I used uh, an LFO. Um, the big trick of this is actually in sample editing. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make this program or something very similar to it right now. So let's go ahead and go to 999. We're going to hit edit. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to edit this key map. We're going to uh, go ahead and pick a, um, a sample route, uh, the one assigned to C7 like we did in one of our in uh, my two previous videos. Okay, so we're going to sign that across the whole key or the whole keyboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit out real quick here, go to the amp page, turn off velocity tracking. Okay, so let's go back to the key map page. Edit. All right, so now I have this piano sample. All right, that's all fine and good. Um, let's start having some fun with this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the sample editor. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about anything on this page. I'm just going to jump straight to trim. Now, um, let's go ahead and zoom out here. All right. And go to the start point. Okay, uh, I alluded in my last video to some fun things that you can do uh, with the sample editor. Uh, and here's my here's here's a classic trick. This works, I think, on all K-series instruments. And and um, people who have owned one of these in the past and have done this will probably be like, oh yeah, that's a totally obvious trick. But uh, for those of you who've never experienced this before, check this out. Okay, so I'm going to pick as my alt start point four six zero seven six. Okay, that's the end of the sample. I'm going to go to the end of the sample here, and I'm going to scroll back a ways. Now, it doesn't really matter how far. I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, go back to 44039. All right, whatever. Um, now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit exit. And hit exit again. Yes, I'm going to save this. Okay, whatever. Exit. Yes, save. Okay. Let's come down here and assign our mod wheel to alt control like we did in the last video. Okay. And I put this on continuous. Now, I'm going to play my note. Now listen, I don't know if you heard that or not. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and turn off the natural envelope and just put this on the user envelope. Turn down the volume a little bit here. I'm going to hold down C4. Okay, let me explain what's happening here. Because I set the alt start point past the end of the sample, 
Um, it's going to start playing at the alt start point, but since there's no end point to play to, what's going to happen is the PC3 is going to play through all of the sounds in its ROM. Okay, so it's going to play through each sample uh, in sequence all the way through the entire ROM. And so in this way, I can hold down a key and I can just, it'll just play back every single um, ROM sample, uh, which is really great because I can then start in different places by picking different samples and superimpose these on top of each other and then fade between the two layers to create um, a cool wave sequencing effect like I did in the program I showed you at the beginning. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to go back to the key map page. Okay, so um, this is great for layer one, so I want to, a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new layer. Okay, uh, let's pick a different key map here. Let's go ahead and pick something like, um, oh, why not a clav? Okay, so the clavinet sample is going to be at a different place in the ROM than the piano samples. Um, actually, let me get something crazy. Oh, here we go. Let's start with like a vocal loop. Okay, you can hear that piano underneath there, but uh, before I go on here, let me go ahead and go to the amp page here, turn off velocity tracking. Okay, it's off for everything. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to edit this, and again, um, I'm going to hit C7 um, here. I'm going to take the sample assigned to E7, or C7, and I'm going to spread it across the whole keyboard. Okay. And then we're going to come here, hit Edit, go to the trim page, okay, and I'm going to put my um, alternate start point at 1, 2, 1, 5, 2, okay, so at the end, and I'm going to scroll back a bit from the end there, okay, uh, exit, yes, save, exit, yes, save, all right, so now I have the exact same thing again, I'm going to go ahead and put the alt method to continuous, and my alt control again is going to be the mod wheel. Okay, um, there we go. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and hear this. So this thing is just going to keep evolving and evolving. Now, for me personally, I feel like these sounds are, are a little too identifiable. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some simple um, DSP into the layer here to kind of make these a little less recognizable. And my favorite for that sort of thing would be Saw Plus Shaper. Here we go. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on both of these. So layer one and layer two. Okay. find it. There we are. Saw plus shaper. Okay, so now let's listen to it. Now I have a sound that's that's fairly jarring and definitely does not sound like either a tuned down piano or a pitched down vocal sample or anything like that. Okay, and that's exactly what I want in this particular case. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that um, uh, these samples fade in and out against each other. Okay, so I'm going to go to the LFO page. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sit, uh, let's see here, let's put the max rate at 4 hertz. That's 4, 0, 0, 0, I think. No, it's just 4, 0, 0. Okay, 4 hertz. Okay, I'm going to set rate control to data. I'm going to pick a, a, um, sign, a plus sine wave. I can keep the phase at zero degrees here. Okay, so that's layer one. On layer two, I'm going to do the same thing. Four hertz. Oops. Okay, rate control to data. Shape is going to be plus sine. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this at 180 degrees. So layer one and layer two theoretically will... Um, be in sync with each other, okay, but they're going to be 180 degrees out of phase with each other. What I'm going to use this for is I'm going to go to the amp page, okay, to the output here, and I'm going to use these to modify the amp uh, volume. So let's go ahead and pick 114, LFO1 on layer 1, whoops, 114, LFO1 on layer 2, okay. The depth I'm going to set to about uh, 66 decibels, 
I think for both of these. So let's go like that. Now on both of these layers I'm going to turn the the actual level down to about 78 minus 78 okay layer 2 minus 78 okay let's see what our craziness hath wrought Okay, awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pitch this up 12 steps just because. There, that adds a little more variation to the sound. Um, let's go ahead and go to the, um, the program effects page. Now, I haven't talked much about effects yet. Um, let's see, we're going to go ahead and hit, uh, I think. Let's go ahead and pick a dub delay here for the insert effect. And for this one, I'm going to pick something that has some chorus in it. Deep uh, chorus delay. Let's do cathedral chorus. Okay, here we go. And I'll turn my aux sand all the way up. Okay, to zero decibels. Okay, so this is just always on. Okay, very cool. Now, this is the fun part. Because I've assigned the mod wheel to the alt start parameter, I can switch this on and off per key. Okay, now the alt start is computed when I press down the key. Once the key's pressed down, I can't change the alt start parameter anymore for the note that's already playing. So, for instance, let me play a note right now. Okay, what you're hearing is just that piano sample alternating with that uh, the vocal sample. Okay, but since I'm using a user envelope, they're just going to sustain forever. So this is perfect because this provides me a nice sort of, we'll, we'll call it a bed here. So I'm going to press down on the sustain pedal and play, uh, let's see, C3 and C2. Okay, there's sort of my bed right there. Um, now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to play C5, but I'm going to move the mod wheel up. Okay, so now this is going to start off um, a note that's going to play through all of the ROM sounds. Just for kicks, I'll throw in C4. move the mod wheel down okay and I'm gonna put in um, let's see whatever is a fifth above C4 there or C3 and I'm just gonna let you enjoy it for a second there How nice is that? There you go. Uh, your soundtrack needs are forever fulfilled. Okay, so um, that's how, uh, that's one way that you can do wave sequencing on the PC3 in a fun and interesting way. Uh, so thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to go over some more ways to do wave sequencing. All right, I will see you then.